lodge the place of thy tent. And let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. Now, can we read the next verse? For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Very profound word. God says, I'm about to do something which is going to suddenly spring forth on the left and on the right. And so you need to get yourself prepared by expanding your tents and lodging the, the tents and, 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 and lengthening the cords of your tent so that when that move of God would happen and there's an abundance of growth and people are now being touched around you, there will be a place that is already prepared by faith so people can walk in and find the rest of their destiny as God would unfold it to them in the days to come. Now listen carefully, people of God, this is so important. Now when I say, you know, expand and, and, and enlarge, I want you to know there are a couple of fa you know, facets, a couple of important truths that we need to identify through the scriptures. I want to mention three of them today and then we are done for this afternoon and we'll continue with next week. Now listen carefully. Three important truths. Thank you, Dixie. Three important truths. Now listen carefully. And as I was pondering on this topic, reading this subject, I heard the word Noah. The great man Noah in the Old Testament. And the Lord started to speak about that man of God. How many of you know he lived in a time that was considered to be one of the most horrifying time in terms of lack of morality among people. It was a time of where the angelic demonic beings had uh, an association with intimacy with the human race and produced giants on the earth, the Bible says. And that was a time in which this man was raised up to become the righteous banner of God as a standard that God could produce to the nations around him now let me tell you people of God this is so important that we understand God spoke to Noah and God the Bible says this this is so powerful God, the Bible says he found favor in the sight of God. Anytime God is about to do something, he will not go after a plan he will not go after a program he will look for a man he will look for a woman that's God's way of doing things and I was telling Ajay this afternoon, I said, Ajay, you know, now what's happening with many churches, because they don't appreciate the move of the Holy Spirit, they don't appreciate the, the presence of the Holy Spirit, and, 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 and as, as, as dismiss the Holy Spirit to some religious kind of uh, uh, doctrine alone. And just because of that, they need to now do a lot of gymnastics. Lord of gimmicks in order to keep people inside the church, including, you know, having programs, having coffee time and party time and, and all these things. Let me tell you, people of God, when the giver of life is removed, there's nothing that can substitute for life because life comes from the life giver and his name is the Holy Spirit. Can I get a shout of praise in the house of the Lord? We can never substitute anything for the lack of the move of God in our midst. Now, let me say, so God found a man who was willing to obey him. Now the three important truths that I want you to understand. Now if God comes and tells him, Noah, I want you to get ready to prepare uh, uh, an ark. Now if that's the word he used, uh, a boat. Now why is it so significant? Why is it so, you know, unique that, that that command was received by faith? Why is it so important? Listen carefully. Because it was a time when there was no rain. They've never seen rain. They've never seen an ocean. They've never seen a sea. Forget a sea, even a lake. They've never seen anything to do with amassing water. And God says, prepare a vehicle that will go in water when there is no water. Now that's the reason it sounds strange. Because God is asking him to make an ark on the ground that will go through water which is not there. 
Now, let me tell you, I would do it if at least I see some cloud gathering. But this man had to do it for 120 years, not even seeing even a glimpse of dark clouds in the sky. Even the concept of rain was foreign to those people in those days. Can you think about it? Even the concept of rain, the Bible says there used to be mist coming from the presence of God and covering the land. You know, that was a time that they have never seen rain. And God says, make a boat. And that's the reason the book of Hebrews says, now look at this, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number, look at those words, 11, 7. I want you to listen to this. By faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. Wow. Moved with fear. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house. By the which he condemned the world and became heir of a righteousness. Which is by faith. He was asked to make things. He was asked to prepare for something that he has never seen before. Now I want you to understand people of God. If you want God to move in the city. We need some people who will get their faith going and harness their faith together as a community and declare even though we have not seen some of the great move of God that we are supposed to see in the land of Canada we are now getting ready as a church, as a community to see God move in a land in a way like never before. Can I get a shout of Amen in the house of the Lord? An expansion is only for people who are willing to prepare for things that they have not seen as yet yet. Woo. I've seen in Africa people waiting outside the church for an hour before the service would start in order to get a seat. I've not seen that in Canada. I've seen people in other countries, they fly into that place in order to be, vis- be visited by the revival that has sparked in that place. I've had to see that in Edmonton. But let me tell you, as a church, I believe and I believe some of you here are going to join with me as I make this announcement. I am preparing by faith. No, you you didn't hear me. I said I'm preparing by faith to see one of the greatest move of God unprecedented in the land of Edmonton and the land of Canada. If you believe that, can you put your hands together? Give the Lord a shout of praise in the house of the Lord. I am preparing as a church. We are preparing as a church to see greater things that is going to unfold in the days to come. Now, that's so important. I love this. I think nobody could have said this better than Spurgeon himself, the prince of preacher. Now, this is what Spurgeon said about this. He said, look at these words. He said, the faith which believes in the probable is anybody's faith. You don't even have to be a believer to believe in the probables. Publicans and sinners can so believe. The faith which believes that which is barely possible is in a better form. Now there are two kinds of faith we already discussed. One, faith in the probable. You don't even have to be a believer. How many of you know if you turn this switch off, the lights will go off? Simple. You know, but then there's another group of people where they believe for things that are barely possible. But that faith which cares nothing for probability or possibility, but rest alone in the word of the Lord, is the faith of God's people. Come on, if there is somebody who can say, I'm not looking at probability, I'm not looking at possibility, but I am basing my faith on the word of God, that is the faith of the people of God. Can I get a shout of amen in the house of the Lord? That is a faith that moved Noam. Amen. And let me tell you something. And when that is, that, that happens, nothing. Noah believed firmly and therefore prepared his ship on dry land. How foolish it might be. Preparing the ship on the ground. Now listen to me. If you want God to move and bring an expansion, do you believe God to do something that you have not seen as yet? No, no. I, I, I think you could do better. 
Do you really believe God to do something that you have not seen in your family, in your life, in your ministry, in the land of Canada as yet? Can I get somebody who believes that to give an agreement, amen, in the house of the Lord? Things that we have not seen. Have we seen people getting saved in thousands in one meeting? Have we seen people being healed in hundreds in one meeting? Have we seen the drunkards coming into the house of the Lord and getting drunk in the spirit. Let me tell you, we have not seen it, but let the church be getting ready to see things that we have not seen. Can somebody shout a sound of faith in the house of the Lord? We are preparing. Hallelujah. So that's what faith takes hold of. It's able to see what is not being seen. Let me make this very clear, people of God. This is something I'm speaking from my heart. I'm able to see great and mighty things happening across the land, like things that I've never seen before. But my heart tells me, my heart tells me, Canada and our land will not be left behind. When God is passing through the other nations, He will not pass us by. He will look at us with mercy. And let me tell you, people of God, in the days to come, I believe we are going to see something that our land has never seen before. There is going to be a mass exodus of people coming into this land and a mass, I mean, going out of people from this land into nations of the world with the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about missionaries rising up from Edmonton to touch the ends of the earth. Can somebody shout an amen? Prepare yourself as a church for things that we have not seen as yet. Point number one. Point, let me tell you, the Bible says he had fear. You know, he was able to believe God and he was afraid of what the judgment that God was speaking. Of course he feared. He prepared himself. But let me tell you, everything must stem out of faith. The fear of God. The preparation must stem out of faith. You cannot prepare for greater works of God in the flesh. It has to come out of faith. And the second important thing, once you get there, once you're able to receive it, you have to start preparing. Now look at this. Are you ready to prepare something which at this point of time makes no sense? Because God said this is for your eight people. All together eight. Now how many of you know for eight people to travel, you can put them into a ten by eight kind of an ark? Easily. I think so, you can put, you know, we have had cars in India where we used to put ten people into one car. Sometimes in the trunk too. We could manage. But let me tell you, God is asking him to build a humongous structure. For eight people. Whew. Does it make sense? 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet height. That's a huge, that was a ship, that was a bigger ship for about 2,000 years. Until recently they built another one. It was a huge ship. Why would you want a huge ship for eight people? Now let me tell you, is the church ready to receive this promise? Why do you want the 500,000 seating church? Hallelujah! I believe in the promises of God. I believe, you know, why do I believe that? Because His track record until now has been so good. If God has done as much as He promised until now... How many of you believe he is going to do greater things in the future? We are going to build a bigger ark in the name of the Lord. The church is going to get ready for a greater growth. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, somebody, is, are you willing to say this afternoon when the growth comes, we will have a bigger ark. We will have a bigger ark. We will have a bigger ark in the name of Jesus. And let me tell you, it's not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Recently, the Lord told me, prepare some teachers. The Lord told me, prepare some ministers. I asked the Lord, what is the reason? God said, I'm going to send families into this church that are going to be ministered by my people. Come on, somebody, receive it in the name of 
of Jesus. We are going to train our young people. We are going to train our older people. We are going to raise up missionaries. You know why? Because God is going to send. We are going to train people to cast out some demons. Because the demons had gone on a vacation. Thinking that they could come any time to Edmonton without anybody noticing them. Next time they step into Edmonton, people are going to recognize them. You devil, you destroyed my life. Get out of this place. We are going to have anointed people rising up in the name of Jesus. What am I trying to say? Let the church be ready because God is going to send a mighty harvest. When God gives you a promise, you have to prepare. But how much ever you prepare, you cannot do it on your own in natural strength. How can you expect the monkeys and the buffaloes and all kinds of creatures entering the ark in clean order and walks into the ark? There will be hundreds of questions that will go through your mind. Will they ever fight? Believers cannot survive together. Come on. Will they, what will happen if they start to go crazy inside the ark? You know, with all your planning, you cannot remove the supernatural. Can I get a witness somewhere here? God has to bring the people. God has to do the miracle. Come on. If you believe that, can you give a Lord a praise offering in the house of a Lord? And then next week we will continue on this point. And God bless you. I will invite you for next week's service. We'll continue. Have to believe God for a supernatural expansion.